Let's talk about what happens when you write a program and execute it inside of an Arduino. For most Arduino programs, they will be single-threaded and sequential. When I say single-threaded, that means only one command is executing at a time, and sequential refers to the fact that the commands are executed in order one after the other. Let's take a look at an example Arduino program. If you would like to follow along with these examples, start by plugging in a USB cable to your Arduino and the other end into your computer. You will also need to download and install the Arduino development environment from arduino.cc. When you start the Arduino development environment and create a new sketch with File, New, you'll be presented with a template that contains the setup and loop functions. These functions are required by the Arduino system, and you must have one of each. When you are ready to send your program to the Arduino, you must first compile it. When you click the Upload button, the AVRGCC compiler, another program that ships with the Arduino development environment, takes your code and turns it into machine code, a language that the microcontroller on the Arduino board can understand. It acts as a kind of translator. We can click the Upload button right now, and our program would compile and be sent across the USB cable to our Arduino. It would run, but not much would happen, because we haven't told the Arduino to do anything. In Arduino, the code you write in the setup function between the curly braces is executed first. Each command you write runs once before moving on to the next command in order. Once the program has reached the end of the setup function, it then moves to the loop function. Each command you write between the curly braces of the loop function is executed in order. Once the program reaches the end of the loop function, it then moves to the top of the loop function where it executes your code again. The code in the loop function continues to execute over and over again forever, so long as the microcontroller on your Arduino has power to do so. Note that there is a lot going on in the background that you don't see here. Somewhere else in the Arduino framework, the setup function is called once and the loop function is called repeatedly. You just need to worry about defining what the functions do. Sometimes, it can help to diagram what's going on in the program. We'll create a diagram known as a flowchart to show how the program is executing. At the top, we'll show the entry point, which we'll call start. This happens automatically in the background whenever we restart or power up our Arduino. Some other things might be happening in the background, but we don't need to worry about them. Arduino takes care of all of that for us. Then, the setup function is called once. Whatever we write in there gets executed. After that, the loop function is called, and the code we write in the loop function executes once. The program then calls loop again, so that code is executed again. Notice that there is no exit for this flowchart, because the loop function is just called over and over again forever. Now, let's talk about how we might design a program. Let's say that we want to flash the Arduino's onboard LED forever, which seems simple enough. There's always an entry point, so we'll create a shape labeled start. We then need to tell the Arduino that we want to use the LED pin, pin 13 in this case, as an output. After that, we want to turn the LED on, wait one half of a second, turn the LED off, and wait another half a second. After waiting for the last 0.5 seconds, the program should return to the point where it turned the LED on. We can look at our flowchart and decide where in the Arduino program our code should go. Since setting pin 13 to output happens once, that should go inside setup. And because the last four parts need to happen in order but repeat forever, they should go in the loop function. Now is a good time to introduce pseudocode. It's not real code, but it's loosely related to our intended language, which is C and C++ in the Arduino environment. We replace real programming functions and terms with human language, English for me, to make it easier to understand. We don't have to worry about spelling and semicolons. It's just a way to outline what we want our program to do before actually writing code. Because this is Arduino, we know that we'll have two functions, setup and loop, that have already been declared for us. As mentioned earlier, we want to tell the Arduino that pin 13 should be an output, so we'll write set pin 13 as output in the setup function. We can figure out the exact command for it later. Then, we need to flash the LED on and off repeatedly, so in the loop function, write turn LED on. 
followed by wait 500 milliseconds, then turn LED off, and wait 500 milliseconds. That's it for our pseudocode. It should be easy enough to read and understand without needing real code. However, with this, we should be able to write the real code. Back in our Arduino sketch, we want to first set pin 13 as output. The function for that is pin mode, so write pin mode, open parentheses, 13, comma, space, output in all capital letters, close parentheses, semicolon, in the setup function. You can leave the lines that begin with the two slashes. They're comments and will be ignored by the compiler. Then in loop, write digital write with a capital W, open parentheses, 13, comma, space, hi in all capital letters, close parentheses, semicolon. This is the special Arduino command that we use to cause a pin to change to some voltage. For our Arduino Uno or Redboard, hi will be 5 volts. Because the onboard LED is connected to pin 13, this will cause current to flow through the LED and turn it on. Then, we want to wait. So write delay, open parentheses, 500, close parentheses, semicolon. This tells the processor to do nothing for 500 milliseconds, which is the same as wait from our pseudocode. To turn the LED off, we need to write digital write with a capital W, open parentheses, 13, comma, space, low in all capital letters, close parentheses, semicolon, which has the effect of forcing the voltage on pin 13 to go to zero volts. That will stop any current flowing through the LED and turn it off. Finally, write delay 500 to wait for another half a second. Select your board and port and click the upload button. Your program should compile and be sent to the Arduino. Assuming your uploading process went smoothly, you should see the onboard LED blinking on and off every second. I hope this gives you an idea of how programs flow in an Arduino. It's also known as control flow in a program, and it's easy to visualize in flowchart form. Pseudocode allows you to write high-level descriptions of what you're trying to do with your code without needing to write actual code. See if you can make the LED on the Arduino behave like a heartbeat. For example, have it blink twice, wait for a second, blink twice again, and so on. See if you can create a flowchart write some pseudocode before actually implementing it in Arduino.